All right, hey guys, it's Daryl here. Um, thought I'd do a quick video to show you guys how to get started with your Zen. Um, so let's get going. Uh, if you haven't already, well, who's kidding who you already have it open, but take it out of the case. Um, travel case, nice little perk comes with it. So it's off by default. Uh, what you need to do is uh, turn it on first. Um, the on and off switch is located on the insides of each of the sides. Um, it's used exclusively to cut the battery power off to the microprocessor. Uh, it does not um, prevent it from being used when it's plugged in via USB. And in fact, the battery will continue to charge even if this switch is in the off position. Um, really, the only use for the, uh, the power switch is to shut off the battery when you're traveling with it so that uh, accidental key presses, say, in your backpack or whatever, won't wake up the keyboard and cause the battery to die or unintended key presses to a device that you're carrying. So, uh, yeah, uh, first thing we do is turn it on. The switches are hidden from the top, so they're kind of recessed in the bottom. Uh, it makes it a bit more difficult unless you have a fingernail or something you can get under there and, and switch it on. I always tend to have my uh, handy dandy tweezers around, so I always use that to turn it on. Um, both sides need to be turned on in order for it obviously to work as a keyboard. We'll just let the e-ink screens boot up for a second. Sometimes the right side pauses, and I'm not sure what exactly that is. Sometimes I think it's waiting for the ability to connect, but sometimes, oh, I do see it is going. It's a weird pause. It never it doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. Um, so yeah, so now we can, uh, once it's loaded, you can see, uh, and as I explained in, in the kind of assembly video, um, your Bluetooth icons here tell you what's going on with your keyboard. Uh, on this side, it's saying uh, I'm connected, so the Bluetooth with the two little arrows indicates that it's connected, and the check mark means it's connected to the left. So the, the right side of the keyboard never connects to the computer, and uh, even when it's plugged in with USB, it, its only purpose is to connect wirelessly to uh, the left side. Um, and in uh, ZMK or ZMK, uh, the, uh, the terminology for that is the central and the peripheral. The peripheral half only talks to the central half, and the central half is just that. It's central between the right half and the computer. So all the keystrokes get sent through this side to the computer, uh, and this, this one does not converse with the computer at all. So um, so we know that this, this keyboard is connected to this half. On this side, we see a Bluetooth icon that says uh, that it's advertising, and that the spot that it's advertising is, is, is channel one, or uh, first position. So uh, by default, uh, the keyboard ships with uh, five possible um, channels or uh, positions that you can uh, connect to, meaning that you can connect to five different devices. So if you have a laptop, a PC, a phone, or a tablet or something, you can connect to all of those and you just save it on a different channel. So I would suggest pairing uh, channel number one to your most used device. So uh, if you use your laptop all the time and sometimes the tablet, put your laptop on channel one. Um, so right now it's advertising on channel one. If you were to go into the Bluetooth settings on, on say your laptop um, and, go, and check for devices that are available to connect, you would see a, a Cornish Zen uh, ready to be connected to. Uh, and then once, um, and then, and, and then this will always, so this logo will change when you're connected to your, it, it'll show, uh, it'll show the Bluetooth icon with the two arrows, um, but uh, it'll still show the number one. So it'll say connected to number one. Um, so if, if I was to, I'm not gonna do it on this on this one because I mean, this, this PCB is gonna get shipped to someone, I think. But um, 
if I were to connect it to my laptop now, this would show up as uh, connected to, to station one. Um, to change layers, uh, there's, there's a, a raise or lower key uh, that's currently defined to this, this key in the, in the key map, and that changes the layer. Uh, and then you have one, two, three, four, five different devices that you connect to. So right now, uh, because we're in one, it would be like I pressed uh, lower and then one. If I wanted to switch to the device that is on channel two, I click this and click two. That number would change to two, and then it would either show advertising, as if I want to connect now to something on channel two, or uh, it'll already have been connected to something in channel two, and it'll say connected. Um, that is uh, that is the basics of this, and and like I said, you can you can jump. It's almost like a KVM switch. You can jump between devices whenever you want. Um, want to point out something on this side here you see a bit of marbling of the display when when the display shuts down or sorry when the when the uh, the keyboard goes into sleep mode or uh, inactivity um, it actually cuts off power to the display and the display uh, when it gets cut off doesn't nicely hold the image the way this one does um, and and I've also noticed that under d certain lights like I have a, a magnifying light that uh, that has LEDs in a, in a ring that I look through to magnifying things, and I find that it it marbles up the screen like that. There's nothing wrong with the keyboard or anything like that. It's just how the e-ink display reacts to certain types of light. I'm still investigating that to see if there's possibly anything in the firmware that we can do to fix that. Um, but as you can see here, this one is looking fine and this one's not. And it, it may turn out that the manufacturer says, hmm, maybe there is something wrong with this uh, with the screen. But uh, at this point in time, like a simple uh, refresh will, uh, will bring that back. And uh, like I said, I haven't really got to the bottom of that. Um, the functionality is 100% there, but there's something weird about uh, about the displays that I'm still trying to figure out. So um, that's that's how you connect the two together. Now, if uh, if you were connected to a uh, something on channel one and then you no longer have that computer, the the keyboard and the computer maintain memory about devices that they've been paired or bonded to, uh, and and that means that uh, if you try to reuse channel one for something else, you're going to have a problem pairing because the keyboard's like, hey, that's not, you know, the device that I remember connecting to on, on channel one. So uh, on that same layer that we have the buttons to change the layers, there's also another one that's used to clear that layer. So you would press your lower key and you would press your clear key and that should clear the channel one and allow another device to be paired up. In practice, sometimes it has to be done a couple times, uh, you know, or sometimes it, it just does not want to take and uh, you have to upload a specific firmware that clears all the memory on it. Um, if uh, if you got in, get into that situ situation, you know, drop me your Pete a, a line in, in Discord and uh, we'll point you in the right direction to get uh, that firmware to clear it. So that gives you the basics on that. Um, obviously we talked about the reset button um, that this is used to uh, reset or possibly put it into bootloader mode. Uh, bootloader mode is the mode that you go into when you want to flash new firmware to the microprocessor. So uh, I'll show you that in a second. Um, in terms of USB, uh, when you plug in uh, a USB cable into, uh, into the device, you'll notice that uh, this light turns on and it's solid. Uh, that is the charge LED. That indicates that there's now power going from USB into the battery and it's, uh, it's charging. 
uh, when that light goes out the charging is complete um, on the screen here and I guess I mean the so there's a list of things that are still to do in 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 ZMK and ZMK and one of one of them is uh, flipping this symbol when an action occurs uh, so that should have flipped to a charging symbol but if I just quickly reset here for a second you'll see that that charging symbol appears um, doesn't change the functionality at all it's just the visual cue about charging it, it was not present at that time so there you can see the uh, the charging icon um, and with a firmware update in the near future we'll have that icon changing automatically when it's plugged in um, so yeah this one is not so when when the right side is plugged in to the computer it's not actually sending its key presses over the USB cable it's actually uh, you just using it for charging and it can also be used for debugging and, and viewing logs and stuff like that but it, it does not the right side does not send the key presses through the USB cable um, if I unplug this side and plug in the left side or the central side this side definitely does um, definitely does uh, connect to the computer uh, and there's a visual cue on the screen that will show up in a second that indicates uh, there we are the USB icon that tells you that you're sending your keystrokes to the computer via USB and not via wireless um, and that's the difference between the left side and the right side on this side you get that indication that you're you're talking via USB to the computer and on this side you never get that this side is still connected wirelessly to um, to the central half um, so yeah th those are things to look out for when you're using the uh, the USB cable if you have to put the keyboard into bootloader mode um, it's as simple as pressing the reset button twice quickly and you'll know that it's in bootloader mode because a you can hear my computer pinging in the background um, a you'll see this uh, You'll see you'll see a pop-up window show up on your computer, which is basically uh, the storage contents of the microprocessor. Uh, it, it basically turns your keyboard into a thumb drive or a USB drive, um, and all you have to do is drag and drop your firmware onto that window that pops up, and it uploads it, and then jumps out of bootloader no mode. And another way you can tell that you're in bootloader mode is that this blue LED, I say, breathes. It 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 pulses slowly on and off. Um, and you only see that when you're in bootloader mode. You may occasionally see that blue LED flash a little bit when you turn your uh, keyboard on or off or uh, wake up from sleep, but it's only temporary and it turns off. If, that, uh, if that's pulsing like that, that means you're in bootloader mode. You can't do any typing, but you can copy new firmware to the, to the storage. Another thing that you sometimes see is that the blue light is on solid and generally what that means is that you flashed the wrong firmware on it and you put the left side on the right or the right side on the left or vice versa that's the only time that light will be on and solid is when you accidentally firm uh, flashed the wrong side to it other than that uh, that light never never glows unless you're in bootloader mode so like I said when you when you flash new firmware it'll upload and then disconnect on its own uh, and go back into regular mode when that mo light stops flashing you'll know that you're back into regular mode and you can start typing again um, yeah that's about it for the introduction um, I mean I can talk a bit about changing the battery but it's uh, it's really just removing these five screws and uh, unplugging the battery there's a connector that it just pulls out plug a new one in and uh, close up the back again and then you're done um, sometimes so this this uh, this JST connector that connects the battery to the to the PCB is a little bit finicky um, once it once it's on it seems to hold pretty well but sometimes it, it uh, if it gets bumped or dropped or whatever it may loosen just enough to have one of the contacts not touching anymore uh, and then in that situation the only thing you can really do is open the back 
and reseat the GST, JST connector and then close it back up again. Other than that, you should never, uh, you never really have to open the, uh, the back of the case for anything unless you're just curious, but, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's the introduction to the Cornish Zen. Um, if you have any questions about it or, uh, something seems odd that doesn't seem to jive with what you're seeing here, uh, best bet is always, and by best bet I mean the fastest way to get an answer is likely through Discord. Drop in my channel, uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, ping me or ask the general question in the firmware help for, uh, channel to, uh, for other people maybe to answer, um, about, uh, what your problem is and we can probably get to the bottom of that. If it's a more technical issue, we may end up, uh, referring you to the, ZMK uh, Discord server because uh, there's a lot more pros that hang out there and uh, they might have better answers. Anyways, uh, I'm, that's, that's it for this video. I'll uh, talk to you all soon.